Hello, good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today, actually tomorrow, update 11.4 will be going live on the North American server, but today the update notes have been released. We're going to go through this article and touch on the main things that you guys need to be aware of as 11.4 approaches us. I think the main thing that we all need to take away from this is that Dasha, Dasha's still around, so it's a big plus. Alright, so, link to this article will be in the description down below. Make sure you guys check it out, you can get a full day of premium time. And of course, if I don't touch on something here and you're wondering if it's coming out or being changed in this update, you can check out this article. Again, we're only going to be going over the main things that you guys need to be made aware of. So, they summarize this update as, Update 11.4 brings you the following new features, launch of an alternative branch of French cruisers in early access, Italian destroyers taking their place in the tech tree, addition of arms race to random and co-op battles, construction of the Atlantico in full swing at the dockyard, and the continuation of submarine testing. So obviously the big thing coming out in this update is the French battle cruisers. They note, these new ships have found their place next to the first branch of French cruisers. The main feature of the newcomers is their large caliber guns, in terms of their class, mounted on the bow. While they relo reload slowly, there is, this is compensated for by the main battery reload booster consumable. The new ships are capable of achieving high speeds with the help of the improved French-specific engine boost consumable. The ship's armor does a great job in protecting their citadels against the medium caliber AP shells, but the new cruisers are quite vulnerable against HE and SAP shells. Medium and long ranges are optimal for engagements, but with the help of their 139mm secondary battery guns with improved accuracy, the new ships can also show their worth in close range encounters. So, this seems to be the general direction that they're going with battle cruisers. They're even trying this out on the British battle cruisers too. That battle cruiser are kind of meant to be close and engaged you know very maneuverable very quick ships but lacking in the armor department but they can get in there they can get the job done and they have the speed to run away as well that's what happened with the german battle cruiser split it seems to be what's happening here with these french battle cruisers they are of course in the cruiser class but i mean they are battle cruisers and again the Ger the uh, german the british battle cruisers they're toying with the idea right now we don't know for sure what their flavor is going to be but that is one of the ideas they're messing with with the british battle cruisers so the new ships in the line will be the sherberg which is the tier 8 they say is a project of a super heavy cruiser close to to the dunkirk class ships with her main armament consisting of eight 305 millimeter guns the breast is a cruiser with 330 millimeter main battery guns concentrated at the bow her a artillery compromises bofors and orlikan automatic guns then we have their Marzai is a super heavy cruiser with a displacement of over 30,000 tons. Her main armament com compromises her nine 33, 330 millimeter guns placed in three turrets at the ship's bow. For a second there, I forgot how to read the zero. <laughs> so this is how we're going to get them. They, they are, of course, coming out in early access in this update. They aren't out fully yet. So you can get the tier eight just by going through the combat missions. She is a reward for completing the final combat mission. That's pretty cool. Uh, the breast can be obtained via random bottles available for doubloons. Ah, Wargaming, why? I hate, I hate that they've brought back the random bundle thing for early access ships. It's so annoying. There was such an uproar about it. We had two perfectly fine early access events without it, but naturally they, of course, wanted that dollar. And then the Marzai will be available at the end of a chain of sequential bundles for doubloons, as naturally. The same thing happened with the uh, Italian DDs, too. Alright, so they're coming out in early access. Again, I would just recommend get the one you can get for free and wait. Again, just two patches, like with the Italian DDs, they're out now. So, no point in throwing money at tech line ships that will be completely free to grind in a few months. So, uh, speaking of the Italian destroyers, they are, of course, out now in full in the tech tree. So, you can go through and finally get your tier 10. I know I will. I've got more than enough XP saved up on um, the tier 8 to go through the tier 9 and the tier 10. Alright, so next big thing is that we're finally getting a new mode in random battles. In update 11.4, the article says arms race will be introduced into random and co-op battles. The key feature of arms race is that this 
is that the special buff areas appear on the map. These provide bonuses to the combat characteristics of all ships on your team. Arms race will be available only in battles where the highest ship is tier 9 or 10. So no super ships. No, I'm sorry, there are super ships. As well as in battles with super ships. God dang it. The main matchmaker settings will be similar to those used in random and co-op battles, respectively. Arms race is for the following eight maps only. Islands of Ice, Sleeping Giant, Warrior's Path, Mountain Range, Northern Waters, Land of Fire, Hotspot, and Loop. So, like I said before, it's always good that we're finally getting new modes. Anytime that they're testing on a new mode, I'm always very excited because we've been playing the same three modes in random battles for years now, and the introduction of Arms Race into random battles is, again, finally, finally, finally a breath of fresh air for random battles. Hopefully we'll see more of these modes that have been tested out, like convoys, airships, and so forth and so on, make their way into random battles because it's it's beyond time that we get some new modes. And I know a lot of players talk about, well, we need some new maps, and yada, yada, yada. Sure, we do, but new maps are neat and all, but new modes are, you know, more exciting and add more flavor to the game. All right, so Clan Battles is beginning once again. It's starting on May 24th. And it goes through July 11th. There's no CVs, one BB per team, no more than two super ships per team. Get ready to see a lot of Kondas and um, Satsumas. Petra Pavlos and Klebera are straight up banned. And you can have no more than three mercenaries per division. Used to you could have a whole division made up of, made up of mercenaries, but now it's down to just three. And submarines are still in testing, and they are continuing their testing throughout this update we've talked about a lot of changes that are coming to submarines with this iteration of the submarine test the but the big things to know is that there's quite a big buff coming to asw so for example the radius of the impact area of a ship drop depth charge was increased from 450 to 800 meters increase the damage dealt with the depth charge airstrike at the outermost parts of the impact area which he recently decreased before this Change the minimum drop distance for the depth charge airstrike, airstrike for battleships, it's, and now equals 500 meters, so the same as for cruisers. That was something that was very annoying in a battleship. If a submarine was close enough to you, but still under the water, you couldn't do anything to it, because it's inside the radius of your ASW aircraft airstrike. Um, so they could sit there, like you could have your hydro on staring at them down their operational depth, and they could stare back up at you, but you couldn't do anything. It was kind of awkward um so anything else just uh nope they are bringing back the hydrophone essentially where you see that effect on the mini map when the submarine is pinging you they're stepping away from the sonar beam being visible to all players so now you're going to see this effect that's your ship's hydrophone picking up the submarine in that area and they recently they told it to where it's more accurate now before it was very what it was like i think It'd be five kilometers away from where they were actually at, but now I think it's supposed to show up within like two kilometers of where the submarine is located at. So, so much needed change to submarines there. All right, now the armory is seeing the addition of our next steel ship. They note when the update goes live, the armory will feature the Mecklenburg, which is the tier 10 German battleship, a battleship carrying as many as 16. 305 millimeter guns placed in quadruple gun turrets. The ship's A defenses comp uh, comprise systems developed in the 1940s. Mecklenburg wields a large number of guns with a high rate of fire and accuracy. Decent air defenses and good armor protection. At the same time, the battleship's HP pool is not that high, and the guns have a small caliber. The warship is equipped with the DFAA and repair party consumables. Players can choose between a fighter and a spotting aircraft consumable. Unlike the majority of, of German counterparts, Mecklenburg does not have access to hydroacoustic search. You can get the ship in exchange for 31,000 steel. Woe is me. I'm at 24,000 steel right now. Ah, I really wanted to try this ship out as soon as she got released, but thankfully the coupon is resetting here, I think, in the next like 20 or so days. So hopefully that will not be too long away oh man i really wanted to get my hands on the ship as soon as possible but uh don't got enough still yet but between uh the coupon resetting and clan battles starting back up soon hopefully my review for the mecklenburg will be out fairly soon my review for the tier 10 italian dd its name slips my mind right now should be coming out 
pretty soon as Adriatico. I think that's what it is. Weebs rejoice! Azure Lane is returning. They note, as part of the next stage of our collaboration with Azure Lane, World Warships will see the addition of uh, the Tier 3 Azure Lane Avora and the Tier 9 Azure Lane Azuma. We're also getting the New Jersey camo for Iowa, but not the actual New Jersey. Formidable for Indomitable. And Azure Lane for Shokaku. Commanders Bismarck, Zara, Chapayev, St. Louis, Formidable, and New Jersey are being added. Uh, the Azure Lane Avora and Azure Lane Azuma commemorative flags are being added. Azure Lane Premium Containers good contents have been updated. Uh, the first item is six Azure Lane Sound Expendable Camouflages. Second item, one of the one of the Dunkirk, Jean Bars, St. Louis, Prince Organ, Rune, Admiral Hipper, Bismarck, Latorio, Zara, Shokaku, Yukakazi, Yuk Azuma, Yatsen, Zavetsky, Rosev. Ooh, couldn't make it. Avora, Chapayev, Belfast, Nelson, Hood, Neptune, Formidable, Baltimore, Enterprise, Cleveland, Montpelier, or New Jersey Commanders with 10 skill points. Good God. <laughs> The third item is 12 special signal flags of the same type, so the Basilisk, Wyvern, Hydra, Dragon, Red Dragon, Leviathan, Skyla, or Orboros special flags. Alright. And that's it for the major new content addition and changes. Now, of course, there's a whole host of balancing um, changes that are coming to ships, but we talked about those in various dev blogs. I'll just post a screenshot of that up on screen right now if you're interested in that. Of course, guys, make sure to check out this article. You can get a free day of premium time somewhere in this article. It's different for everyone, so make sure you grab that out of the article and enjoy that free day of premium time. So, 11.4, I'm very excited to, well, get my hands on the new battle cruisers as much as I can, which is looking like it might just be the Tier 8. might, you know, take a couple of knocks at the Tier 9, see if... I could pick that up and give you guys a first impressions video on that, but I'm definitely not going to burn like $300 getting the tier 10 out of uh, out of those sequential missions, uh, those sequential bundles, not even sequential missions, because again, that's like $300, $400 for a tier 10 tech line ship. Unfortunately, I'm very upset that they do that. And plus too, like, if we have the whole line out wargaming, like we have the tier 8, the 9, and the 10... Why don't you just release the line if you're allowing players to get it? Like, I get it, you want to make money, but, like, come on. If they're ready, let us play them, you know? But anyway, guys, let me know what you guys think, think about this update in the comments down below. Uh, sometime today, the first winner of the 35k subscriber giveaway should be selected, so make sure you guys are checking your YouTube notifications that uh, are on the previous Monday's video, so you guys could potentially win one of those premium ships we are giving away as part of the 35k subscriber celebration anyway guys hope you guys have a wonderful week have a wonderful tuesday hope to catch you guys in the next one